Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to revisit the question of whether or not there was an Iranian great replacement. Among white nationalist circles, a popular myth prevails and that is that during the medieval period, the Arabs as well as the Turco-Mongols largely replaced Iranians in the Iranian plateau. This myth is then utilized by white nationalists to deny Iranians of their great and rich ancient cultural heritage and is used to argue that modern day Iranians are not the descendants of the ancient Iranians and that the ancient Iranians were largely genetically replaced by the Turco-Mongols and the Arabs. Overall, as you'll see in this analysis, this myth is not correct and even when using the most admixed sources of foreign ancestry, so these sources themselves have significant Iranian farmer and Eastern Iranian ancestry, as is the case with the medieval Turks, even when using these sources, you'll be able to see that Iranians have around 75-80% to 80 genetic continuity. What this means is that even when using the most admixed sources, so what this means is that these sources have significant Iranian farmer or Iran derived ancestry and as is the case with the medieval Turks Eastern Iranian ancestry, nonetheless you'll be able to see even when using these sources alongside a purely Andronova source and not a B. Mekized Iranian source, you'll still see that modern day Iranians derive around greater than 50% of their ancestry from an Iran calculatic source and around 15-25% to 25% of their heritage from a proto-Indo-Iranian Andronovo source. So without further ado, I'd like to get into this analysis. The autosomal breakdowns featured here are from Davitsky's G25 calculator utilized through the Genoplot software. So to begin, here is a claim made by Jason Rosa Giorgiani. So he's a white nationalist and the claim he makes here is that the Arab Muslim conquest was bad. But once this was compounded by the genocidal Turkic and Mongol conquests of Iran, a demographic shift took place that deprived Iran of the genetic basis for the production of a Hegel, Nietzsche or Heidegger. So what this means is that Giorgiani promoted the myth of an Iranian great replacement in 2016 and he even advocated this view in his NPI conference in which he stated that Iranians were replaced by Arabs and Turco-Mongols. My genetic analysis here will largely refute these claims. Moving on, we see Giorgiani making the same bold claim in the exact same uh, article and you can see that he says prior to the Arab, Turkic and Mongol conquests of Iran, in other words up to the end of the Sassanian period, the majority of Iranians were genetically identical to European. So what Giorgiani is advocating here is the myth of an Iranian great replacement and this is why he should not be trusted and this is why none of what he says can be taken seriously. So in the remainder of this analysis, I'll focus on refuting this and also proving that there was indeed, in contrast to the claims made by Georgiani and white nationalists, there was indeed no Iranian great replacement. And this will be done using the most admixed sources of foreign ancestry. So what this will prove is that even when using these sources, Iranians indeed have a great degree of genetic continuity. So that's pretty much it for the introductory phase of this video. In the next phase of the video, I'll be taking a look at the breakdowns that I've come up with for modern day Iranians, including the Kurds and the Azerbaijani. So up first, we have the breakdowns for the Iranians. And you can see that their Iran calculatic answer ranges from 53.8 to 76.8%. So again, this is the overwhelming majority of the Iranian genome. And this proves that there is greater than at the very minimal 50% genetic continuity to the calcolithic which is interesting. Then after that you can see a proto-Indo-Iranian component so this is the uh, European uh, step ancestry so you can see it ranges here from around about 13.6% in the Iranian uh, Persian from Tehran to as high as 22.8% in the Iranian Zoroastrian so you can see that this component is a significant part of the genome of modern Iranians then you can see modern Caucasian ancestry appearing here as well but not exceeding more than 10.8% South Asian answer here is heavy but you can see that the peak is only around 8.6% so it is a minimal part of the Iranian genome. Then you can see medieval Turkic answer only peaking at 8.2% Arab answer is surprisingly very minimal and you can see that it does not exceed more than 11.8% at the most but for the most part for the majority of these samples it's actually below 5 with the exception of the southern Iranians which is interesting. Then you can see also see an ancient Hellenic source which only appears in two of the samples but does not exceed more than 8.8%. .8%. Moving on, 
You can also see ancestry deriving from a sub-Saharan Bantu source which only appears in two of the samples but does not exceed more than 1%. So what this means is that on a genetic level, modern Iranians have around 70 to 80% genetic continuity once using these admixed sources of foreign ancestry. But nonetheless, you can see that the overwhelming amount of descent for modern Iranians comes from a Iran Calcolithic and Andronovo source. So what this means is that on a genetic level there was no major great replacement in Iran as if there was modern Iranians would have much less continuity but you can see that at the very least they have around 75% genetic continuity which is interesting. So again these models are very much an excellent and sound as you'll be able to see here. So here you can see the charts uh, displaying the fits and you can see that for the majority of these samples the fits is lower than 1.5 with the exception of three of them where it exceeds two. Nonetheless you can see that most of these models are accurate and excellent and very much sound. So yeah again these results on modern day Iranians from the plateau largely refutes the myth of an Iranian great replacement. So up next we have the Iranians from Khorasan and you can see their Iran Calcolithic ancestry ranges from 46.2 to 58%. Their Andrano ancestry ranges from 14.6 to 21.6%. Their South Asian ancestry ranges from 6.4 to 15.4%. Their medieval Turkic ancestry ranges from 4.6 to 17.6% and their minimal sub and modern Caucasian and antiquity Arab ancestry. So these results show that the Eastern Iranians, despite having less continuity than most modern Iranians, are nonetheless still mostly contiguous. So here we have the fits for these uh, breakdowns and you can see again they're excellent and they're below 2 which is interesting and in one of them they're below 1 so what this means is that these models are great. Again, these results prove that despite having less continuity than most modern day Iranians, Eastern Iranians are also largely genetically akin to the ancient Iranians. So up next we have the Iranians from Azad Mard's collection. So you can see their Iran Calcolithic ancestry ranges from 54.6 to 73.2%. Their Andronova ancestry ranges from 10% to as high as 21.8%. Then you can see their Antiquity Arab ancestry does not exceed more than 8%. Their Medieval Turkic ancestry does not exceed more than 11.4%. But what's interesting here is that they do have elevated amounts of modern Caucasian ancestry. So these results indicate that on these Iranians there was somewhat of a Caucasian influence. Nonetheless you can see they are still mostly genetically contiguous. So here are the fits and again you can see that the fits are excellent and for the most part they are below too which is interesting with the exception of the Persians from far. So overall you can see that these results very much paint an accurate picture of the genetic origin of modern day Iranians in Azad Mard's personal collection which is very interesting and they support genetic continuity among Iranians. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this phase of the video. In the next phase of the video, I'll be taking a look at the Kurds and showing that they in fact have less genetic continuity compared to modern Iranians, though you'll be able to see that they still have more continuity compared to the Azerbaijanis. So here we have the results for the Kurds. So you can see there on Calcolithic ancestry ranges from 55% to as high as 77.4%. You can see that their Andronova ancestry ranges from around about 13.6% to as high as 20.8%. So again it is significant here. And then you can also see ancestry deriving from a medieval Turkic source not exceeding more than 8%. So it is a minimal part of the genome of these Iranians. After this the South Asian ancestry does not exceed more than 7.6% and then you can also see antiquity Arab ancestry here not exceeding more than 8.2% so Arab ancestry is at a minimal and then you can see ancient Hellenic ancestry being elevated here not exceeding more than 13% and finally modern Caucasian ancestry only appears in 5 of the samples but does not exceed more than 8.8%. So what these results indicate that on a genetic level the Kurds are also largely contiguous and there is no Kurdish great replacement though some of these samples they have less genetic continuity compared to the other Iranians analyzed here. Overall what these results prove is that there is indeed a great degree of genetic continuity among the Kurds as well. And again you can see that they are mostly of Iranian genetic descent. Moving on, we have the fits for these models and you can see again the fits are below 2 for the majority of these samples with the exception of 2 of them. So what this means is that these models are very much excellent. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my analysis on the Kurds. Up next, I'll be taking a look at the Azerbaijanis. So the Azerbaijanis have the least genetic continuity compared to other Iranians and you can see their Iran Calcolithic ancestry ranges from 42.4 to 59.4%. Their medieval Turkic ancestry here is minimal and you can see that it does not exceed more than 15.2%. So what this means is that despite being elevated here it's nonetheless very low and then you can see 
that the ancestry deriving from an Andronova source is a bit lower here, but nonetheless, the peak is 16.6%. You can see minimal South Asian ancestry here, not exceeding more than 3.8%. Then you can see ancient Hellenic ancestry being elevated here, but not exceeding more than 13%. Overall, however, you can see that the other Bajanis tend to have more uh, modern Caucasian ancestry compared to the other populations and less Arab ancestry. Nonetheless, you can see that the Caucasian input is very heavy among the other Bajanis, so they're not purely an Iranian population. So the other Bajani genome has had a replacement on a far greater level than the other Iranians analyzed here. So the final thing I just like to discuss here are the fits for these models and you can see that they're below 2 in the majority of them and in fact in the majority of them they're below 1.5 so these models are again excellent and sound. So yeah overall this analysis took a look at the genetic origins of modern day Iranians in light of their foreign ancestry including the Kurds and Azerbaijanis and proved that among the Kurds and the Iranians there was not much of a great replacement refuting the myth of an Iranian great replacement. So yeah, that's essentially it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.